It didn't listen to me. It walked out of the thicket. It turned around and looked at me. They looked up, and in this tree, there was a monkey man. And the monkey man jumped down out of the tree and started running away. And suddenly, they're right in front of the car. He slams on the brakes and manages to stop. And he's skidding because it's not quite, you know, um, gravelling. And for literally for about a second and a half, they just stood there because they don't know where to go. And you tell them panicking, they're like roof dropping. Their 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 face is like twitching. Bigfoot Society. This is your host, Jeremiah Byron. Every week I talk to different people in the cryptozoology field. You never know who's going to be on next week. If you'd like to sponsor the show, head on over to patreon.com forward slash the Bigfoot Society. You get access to a ton of things there, including a close-knit cryptid community on Discord where you can connect with like-minded cryptid researchers and enthusiasts, weekly bonus content, the ability to hang out with each week's guest after the main show, exclusive merch, and much, much more. In this week's episode, I get to talk to Courtney Swihart from Small Town Monsters. Uh, fun chat about all sorts of different things to do with uh, being a photographer, cinematographer. Great advice for aspiring artists out there. We talk about some uh, recent STM shoots and also get some interesting new information about the uh, Monster Fest event coming out next year. You won't want to miss this episode. Sit back, uh, get something to drink or eat, whatever makes you comfy, and uh, enjoy this interview with Courtney. All right, Bigfoot Society, we've got Courtney Swihart with us from STM, Small Town Monsters. How's it going, Courtney? Very good. Thank you for having me. Oh, you got, I am, I am excited to talk to you, uh, tonight, um, uh, just because you haven't really gotten out there. Uh, you know, you're, as we were talking about earlier, you like to be behind the camera. Um, mm -hmm. and, and let's talk about, uh, just so, you know, there's a few people that probably they may not know what Courtney does. So I'm going to go over the bio that you provided. Mm -hmm. Uh, so. We have Courtney is a member of the Small Town Monsters crew and cinematographer. She started with STM a couple years ago as a photographer, then became a cinematographer, and is now the company business manager. You keep it going. Uh, Courtney loves to travel and experience new places. She also, or prior to working with STM, she worked as a registered veterinary or I'm gonna say veterinary I'm gonna say it all silly. I'm sorry. I apologize. Yeah. That's terrible. For 12 years with a concentration in neurology for her last eight years in the field. Very cool. Courtney currently lives in the North Canton area with her six-year-old daughter. I have mm -hmm. a seven-year-old, so I get the fun times you are having, probably. So it's, oh, yeah. it's a lot of fun. A lot of dinosaurs. He's you know, my kids, uh, he's into she dinosaurs. So. Loves dinosaurs, dude. Yeah, Dino dinosaur cows. train. It's the thing. Dino train. Have you been to? Uh, oh man, listeners are are clicking off right now. But I, <laughs> we got to talk about dinosaurs for a minute. Have you been to the Indianapolis Children's Museum yet? Not with her. Like Holy we mackerel. drive through Indianapolis all the time when we're filming, but I don't you have her go. with me. I've had her to. So in North Canton, there's actually the McKinley, McKinley Monument has a natural history museum with some okay. dinosaur bones, but oh, she doesn't snap. get it because okay. they're bones and she's yep. used to singing, dancing dinosaurs. I get it. I get it. So it's a little different. Uh, I will put in a plug for the Indianapolis Children's Museum. It's amazing. It's like way better than the Smithsonian, but they actually have paleontologists working there on dino dinosaur bones and the kids can come up. Uh, to this window where there's a paleontologist on the other side and they can talk to him about dinosaurs an oh, actual so paleontologist. Cool. It's amazing. But Hey, let's talk about cryptids. Um, <laughs> so what let's start to you. What is STM Courtney? So when I first started with it, it was something my best friend, Heather Mosier was oh. super into. She started doing research for them 
And she was like, you got to watch some of these movies. And I was like, okay, we'll watch some of these. We'll do like a girl's <laughs> night or whatever. And then the next thing I know, she's like, oh, I'm doing a series. Will you come on a shoot? Mm. So the first couple things I did were the haunting shoots. Oh, sure. Yeah. And then from that, uh, I started taking stills because uh, Jason wasn't in action at the time. So they need someone to take stills. And I had done some photography before. And then that rolled into the Rougarou shoot, which just mm. kept going from that point. So let's let's talk about some of that. So when you say you're you're talking stills, break that down for you know the person who's let's say you know the listener who's just into STM because they like you know they like Bigfoot, but they don't really know what taking stills like uh, you know uh, mm -hmm. the whole how being a photographer is very important for something like STM. Yeah. So obviously we have cinematographers that do the actual filming of the movies. So they okay. do the videos, but we also do still photography or just your regular pictures for behind the scenes stuff, because that is what we use on social media to promote everything. We have at least one, uh, be are on the, or on the trail of companion guide, which is our book that goes along the first handful of, you know, on the trail of movies, both Bigfoot and UFOs. So having that documentation of the behind the scenes action and still photography is pretty important for both promotional needs, as well as like, we'll do video for our, uh, we have a YouTube channel where we have a squad and yeah. the squad gets exclusive stuff whenever we can get someone to edit it. So it's good to have that stuff for that so still photography might sound like something that isn't that important when we're doing video and making movies but if we don't have that still photography we can't promote the movie later that's true and like as a guy who does like bigfoot society right now is just me and that's a lot of work but like mm -hmm. it would be amazing if I had someone who was like over my shoulder, like snapping photos and like, oh, there's Jeremiah like doing the podcast and like, hey, let's mm -hmm. put that up on Instagram. No, it doesn't happen. But um, maybe I can get my seven year old to do that, though. There's a thought. We'll see. Maybe give him a cell phone. <laughs> be like get me doing what uh, I do. No, he's already he's already like, when do I get a cell phone, dad? And I'm like, uh, never. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. um, Oh, I do want to say if you're not in the uh, STM squad. You absolutely need to be in it because so I've been in, I'm like plus 12 months. Uh, awesome. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but the thing is, is like to be able to say, to see like the 4k version mm -hmm. of videos is it that to me is like what I love. And it's, you know, you gotta, you gotta support what you love. So I love, uh, I love SDM stuff. No doubt. Um, and the Ridge just came out yesterday. Oh I am I know. so stoked about it. Eli did such a good job with that edit. And I was on that shoot. You can kind of see my head bobbling around on the night investigation. As okay. well. And he left a cliffhanger at the end. And boy, is the next episode going to be exciting because I know what happens oh, from snap. there. You're going to tell us right now what happens. I'm not going to tell you what happens. I'm just going to say I was there and I remember that night and he stopped at a very good cliffhanger. Dude, so from Eli there, Watson is better. so good. He's mm -hmm. so good. He's a very good editor. And that was such a fun series to film. Like he hasn't even used a portion of the interviews we did. We did so many interviews for that already. Wow. So there's so much more to come from that. And I think the next couple episodes are going to be really exciting. And we're already planning our next trip back for more investigations for oh that my series. Goodness. Wow. I'll tell you what I am. This is terrible, but I have to confess that I am extremely behind in all STM stuff because we just got back from a two week vacation. And the two weeks before that, we moved uh, to a new house. Oh, so I understand. That's a lot of work. You get it. So it's like, I, I you know, I'm on vacation and I see stuff like, mm -hmm you know, uh, well, ever, anything come out and, um, I haven't seen chestnut Ridge yet. I haven't seen the Ridge yet, mm. but I will tell you. So we were, we went out to new England and we're driving back through the Ridge area. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I know it's right here. And I'll tell you, there's weird vibes in that area. Like it's just, it's just something weird. Yeah. I can totally get how weird stuff happens in that, that chestnut Ridge area. So I'm excited to watch, uh, that 
that uh, production by STM. It's going to be awesome. Everyone should check it out. Go check out their YouTube channel. What would you say that your favorite uh, STM project that you've been involved with so far has been? Well, I mean, the easy a answer is Alaska. We spent okay. over two weeks filming what's going to be two movies and two Beyond the Trails in Alaska. Wow, two Beyond the Trails. Awesome. Yeah, so there's going to be one Beyond the Trail already came out. The other one is going to come out coinciding with the movie release here in the fall, late fall time. It's going to be our last release of the year. Uh, so the Beyond the Trail will come out the same time as uh, – on the trail of Bigfoot, the last frontier. Oh man. Um, it must've been beautiful up, up there. No Literally question. everywhere you look, looks like a green screen. It's too pretty. Wow. Like, so there's actually four sections of Alaska, which I only found out cause we got one of those travelers guides when we were up there and I looked and we actually stayed in each of the four sections of Alaska. So we technically fit, hit all the parts of it, even though, I mean, I feel like everywhere we drove was four to six hours. Like it's so spread really? out, but there was so much more that we didn't see, but we technically hit all the different areas. Man, that's, that's awesome. Do you have any uh, crazy behind the scenes adventures or like a crazy story that sticks out that you uh, would be able to share? Or if you don't, don't worry about it. I'm kind of just, I mean, the craziest thing that I've been a part of was in Alaska. We took a helicopter oh, man. with the doors off. And I had, Oof. we have a new Ronin uh, DJI uh, film camera. So it's basically a really nice cinema camera on a gimbal. So it doesn't oh, shake. It's yeah. very steady. And I had that doors off on a helicopter and we flew to the top of a mountain within Denali National Park landed and we were able to get out on the tundra and film there before we then like the helicopter pilot was super chill he's like yeah take your time so we're like no how high can we get and then we were able to get back in and leave it was great oh that's amazing oh so cool so cool uh did you see any did you see any bear up there so we saw some moose we oh, saw nice. her hold heard of caribou Ooh, okay. but we didn't see any bear alex and eli saw bear because part of Ooh. their btt filming was on this island that the main crew didn't go to it was just the two of them yikes but they said they saw two or three bear and i think the one was actually swimming because they were on an island they would have had to swim but we didn't see any wow oh man i, I was legitimately like paranoid for you guys i was like oh man they're going to alaska this mm -hmm. is like the one time where i feel like okay because so it's like you know you watch the stm like when you guys you had the production diaries and you get like that it's a real like family atmosphere like you know everyone's hanging out joking around mm -hmm. having a good time but then it's like you put something into alaska in the mix and like that's like do or die time because it's like that's some crazy stuff out there but yeah you know you guys made it through uh life was good and you still yeah. were able to zach in particular time. was very concerned about the okay. bears and all of us so we all had our own bear bell oh what's which a bear is bell? a it's a bell that you can wear like on your pants or on a book bag it has like a little carabiner okay but then it has a little mesh bag with a magnet in it so you can put the magnet on it so that it doesn't ring when you don't want it to oh that's cool and then he also took two canisters of bear spray nice and of course alex and eli wherever they go they're armed so if they were with us we right. had firepower as well yep yep man go zach you're ready to, to he go was running very at ready. him with two cans i love it <laughs> i love it ah that's wild that's wild uh, every episode, I like to see if I can get some some practical advice for for the listeners. So let's pretend like uh, let's say, you know, maybe there's some people listening to this. They're they're trying to research cryptids, but they want to make sure that, you know, they're taking uh, they're taking photos when they're out there, uh, but they may not have the best uh, equipment. Do you have uh, any advice for like, let's say maybe aspiring photographers or, or, you know, maybe basic info they should, 
they should uh, remember? Well, if you're just taking pictures, it if you just have like a point and click camera that's like autofocus, like most okay. digital cameras that you get, you just want to make sure there's good lighting because oh, yeah. that really helps get definition on things. If you have like an actual nice camera that you can manual focus, you want to make sure that you have a lens that's going to be able to capture your subject. Like when I do still photography, I did a lot of landscapes. So I like the primary lenses that don't have a zoom on them. So to change your framing, you physically move your body. If you're wanting to do something like wildlife photography, such as a cryptid, right. you're going to want a zoom lens so that you don't have to move so that you can zoom in with the lens itself and okay. hopefully get good definition on it if your lighting's good. But after that, it's all about exposure, which a lot of cameras will do automatically for you unless it's something that you've set on manual. So it's just a matter of light, your light, your exposure, and how you're able to zoom on it to get good definition. That's, that's good advice. What if let's say scenario you're out in the woods, you're looking for Bigfoot and you see it. Like, how do you be ready as a photographer for something that might pop out for half a second? And like, are you just like, I know the NAWAC mm -hmm. uh, down in area X, like there's guys literally, they walk around with their camera ready. I believe in the Bigfoot mm -hmm. and Beyond episode. Like, yeah. how do you handle that as a photographer? What's very funny is I was with Seth when he saw his Bigfoot during filming the Bigfoot project. I was yeah. the one in the back of the gator filming oh, and I man. filmed him <laughs> because that's what I was doing. I was doing behind the scenes stuff. You were doing what was, was there. Yeah. I was filming him film the episode. So I was getting like the B camera stuff. So yep. I'm filming him as he's talking to uh, Corey Mosier, mm -hmm. driving around the thing. And then all of a sudden he's jumping out of the gator and running up the hill before it even stops. So oh I'm filming him as he's yelling, I just saw one. So uh. I was in that situation with a running camera pointed in the wrong direction. And I think a lot of that is going to be just luck. Yeah, it's got to be. Because if you're not facing the right direction... And I mean, you're not going to adjust your camera settings in that situation because you have a fraction of a second. Yeah, no, it, it's true. It, you have a fraction of a second. Um, oh, man, that, so we kind of talked about this earlier. So you are, you're primarily, uh, you know, um, you're taking the, the pictures, you're taking the video, but let's, let's talk about this. You are, cryptids are not your thing per se, or, or are they? I like stories. I like the spooky stories. Okay. I like the lore. So I like a lot of things that involve cryptids, but they weren't what was my first thing. Okay. I guess if that makes sense. Yeah, I get it. So because I am putting myself in that situation, like I'm, you know, pretty into Bigfoot, like in cryptids. Like if I was in that situation, like I know a Bigfoot had been seen. And I was like, I would think about that all the time. Like, you could have taken the picture, but thankfully you're not like super Bigfoot fanboy, which is, I was upset because okay, I was there and I was like, yeah, I get it. I saw him react and mm. I filmed him running up the hill rather than panning up the hill to see what was up there though from where he saw it, it was far enough up the hill that yeah. I was filming with a medium grade, like handy cam. So the zoom on it isn't fantastic anyway. And okay. it was broad daylight. Okay. So I'm focused on something in front of me exposed for that. So to pan up there that far away, it would have been blown out. Sure. Like it would have been too bright. Yep. So I don't know that even if I were fast enough to react, I would have gotten an image that was worth you. anything. And I think that's the problem with a lot of these, these cryptid things is you see them and they're, they're grainy, they're blown out. You can't see them well. And a lot of that is cameras aren't that fast yet. Like if you're moving mm. something that quickly, even if you're exposed properly, it takes the computer and the camera a second to adjust to that. Okay. So if you only have a fraction of a second, you might get something, but the quality is not going to be that good. Okay. Wow. So you would, you're saying like you, you would try to do the whole CSI zoom in on it and it would not be a good time. Like it would all be, you pixels. can't add pixels that yeah. are there. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Wow. 
what was what was Seth's re- so you know we've all seen the the episode mm-hmm. and the, I'm a huge fan of it a lot of people are digging it um what how would you it, it, uh, describe Seth's reaction to that whole like being there and actually seeing it as a happen what was yeah that must have been interesting so I was standing in the back of the gator filming down on him and Corey talking as they were driving along. All of a sudden, Seth starts yelling, look, look, I just saw one. And he's jumping out of the gator. We're still going like 10, 15 miles an hour, significantly fast to jump out. Corey's confused. So he starts hitting the brake, but Seth's already out, but we're on an embankment. So it's quite steep that he's jumping out of a moving vehicle, running down a hill and then starting to run up. But there's deep brush, so you can only Mm. get so far. Okay. So I jump out to film him. Corey goes and turns the gator around to come back so he can park on this hill. And by the time that's done, it's just Corey being confused. I'm not (laughs) sure what's going on. (laughs) And then Seth's going, no, I just saw one up there. And he's telling us what he saw. Wow. And we're like, okay we believe you but there's no way to get up there because like two weeks later they cleared all the brush on that pipeline but at that point the brush was four and a half feet deep and it was thorns you couldn't get up there Uh, a couple weeks later when we went back and they cleared it where he saw that there's actually a small uh like atv track on either side of the woods so it'd be an easy pathway for game or anything else right. to travel across. Makes we sense. didn't know that at the time. If we knew that, we could have found that path and gone around. Mm. Let's let's you've been involved with the Bigfoot project too. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> when you watch that that series, I get the feeling that it just seems like it, it is it a weird place. It seems like there's some weirdness at times. I don't know. I mean, Mm -hmm. how did, what do you feel like when you're like going through the woods with the group and like, there's some weird stuff that you guys are catching. Yeah. Well, the Bigfoot project is filmed on Heather's farm. That's my best friend's farm. Oh, sure. So I've spent a fair amount of time there through the years, Oh, interesting. definitely there are areas of it that get spooky, especially when it gets dark. Mm. Um, the one area that we call the Rougarou Woods because that's where we filmed the recreation for Hall of right. Rougarou. Yep. Um, there's definitely been some weird noises up there. There was one uh, area or one time when I was out there with Heather and Seth and then Adam Dugan was yep. up. And there were these weird lights. And the oh, only yeah. explanation is it was something weird or there were poachers. Like there's no other explanations right. for that. Um, which in the area, poachers aren't out of the question, but that was so far onto the property mm-hmm. that it would have to be a very bold poacher. Right, right. It's not like it was just off the road. It was like a quarter mile or so off the road. Oh, wow. In an open field. So that's pretty bold if you're a poacher to go that far. Yeah, in open right. Space. Right. Uh, and then... I mean, there's been several weird things. There was one day where it was like 11 a.m. We had just filmed the night before. We were yeah. cleaning up to leave. So we're packing camera equipment. Uh, Heather and Corey had just taken a load of like sleeping bags and trash up on the gator. And it was me, Seth, and someone else still packing up the last of the camera equipment. And I went outside to like empty the cooler or something. And there was just the clearest whoop in the world really and it was the first whoop i had ever heard oh man so i turned around and i looked for the boys and i was like are you guys messing around and then one of the guys keep peeked from behind the cabin and they're like no i thought that was you and i'm like no wow that wasn't me i'm not gonna stand on the front porch and whoop at 11 a.m i'm tired yeah cool boy um, but it was like so weird because all night before we'd had wood knocks but that was the first vocalization we had heard on the property at all. And it was just mid morning when we were leaving all kinds of noise. There were tractors going nearby and just. Whoop. Wow. That's so this is, this is interesting because 
you not being a hundred percent a Bigfoot person, like did that sound remind you of anything else or like, or is it something completely different than anything that you'd heard before? I mean, I'm aware of what it's supposed to sound like, but I hadn't sure. heard anything exactly like that before. Okay. So I'm like, one of these guys is doing a really good impression mm -hmm. or that's something weird. Gotcha. And I was like, that's not a bird. I know that. I okay. don't know anything else that would make that sound in this area. So I'm like, if it's not one of the guys, then I don't know what it is. Interesting. That's very interesting. Have there, you know, you've been on quite a, a few sh other shoots as well. Have there been other situations where it's like something that wasn't captured on camera, but you're like, oh man, that was kind of weird. Anything that comes um, to mind. If not, no problem. Let me think. I'm trying to think what all, we've had such a busy year. You guys have. I it's not. Like, um, I mean, there are lots of stuff in Alaska that was just fun. I don't know if I'd say anything like crazy. I know there was one. So the one haunting shoot we did at Mansfield Reformatory. And this oh, yeah. legitimately may have been like mass hysteria. Uh, I um, like this stuff. <laughs> but so there is. I think it's above the West Block. There's a attic area where yeah. whenever the one prison in Columbus caught on fire, they brought up all the hardened criminals. They put them there. It's supposed to smell like smoke or whatever. And the guards wouldn't go in there. Like it's supposed to be very violent when those people were there. So it's supposed to be yeah. really haunted or just heavy in there. Right. So we were filming the hauntings episode there were 10 or so of us there. Like it was a very big crew that night. It's a very big building. We had the whole place to ourselves. We spread out and I went up there with a couple of the guys and we started seeing these lights at the end, but it's this football field sized room with no windows, oh, wow. one door at the other end. Yeah. And I'm like, I think we're seeing things. This is weird. Like we're seeing lights, but We've been in dark. It's very quiet, like sensory deprivation. So we left. We got a couple other people. We came back. And we sat there at the far end away from the door. The door closed completely dark. And after about 10 to 15 minutes, we saw the lights again. I'm like, mm. okay, I don't know if this is our minds or if this is mass hysteria. Because on the tour, we did interviews ahead of time. And they told us that sort of thing happened. So I'm like, was this implanted in our minds who are expecting to see it so our brains producing it or did this happen but one of the lights did kind of look like a guy running towards us with like a baseball bat above his head i mean sort of but not like that's very specific courtney that's that's I don't wild get, i don't wow. get scared easy but at that point i did grab the person next to me and i'm like i think yeah i'm here i would have too i'd been like let's get out of here yeah i mean and Heather was there at that point and she was like, this is crazy. Yeah. I was, like, I was like, we were told to expect this. So we're in a dark room, our, you know, sensory deprivation. Could this be something right. happening? I don't know right. if we went back again and it was repeatable. I think that would be very interesting, but it True. is so expensive to rent that place. I oh, don't really? know that. Oh my gosh. Wow. I mean, it's, man skilled reformatory like it's so expensive to rent and we even got i mean we we're filming there it was promotional for them so we got a very slight discount but it's like so expensive to rent the whole place and i've also with heather and some other friends gone on a public ghost hunt and that's there's so many people so you couldn't even try to re-experience that unless you had the whole place to yourself where it's quiet crazy yeah I'm glad you guys. That's not my my thing. Is the cryptids? I I don't like the ghost stuff. It's like ooh, you know, I'm not I'm not into that stuff. Like the scariest movie I can watch is Signs. So mm -hmm. that that should tell you something. I'm I'm but whatevs. Um, that's an interesting story. Guy rushing at you with a ba baseball bat. No, thank you. Like it was really ugh. weird. And the thing is, we all saw it at the same time. And we're like, what color did you see? I saw like a yellowish green. Well, so Ooh. did I. 
Really? So, yeah, we were able to confirm oh. that we were all seeing the same thing. We weren't seeing different okay. things. But at the same time, it was implanted ahead of time during the interviews that X, Y, and Z is seen in here. These are the colors and this sort of thing. Oh, well, uh, okay. So here's the thing. Um, if you guys had not had that talk ahead of time and yeah. you were like, I saw this, I saw it too, then it'd be game over 100% mm -hmm. real. But, you know, now that I know that it's like, okay, you had this briefing and, oh, you know. One second. Do what you need to do. You are good. All right. I'm going to look at the chat. We got the chat going on with the Patreon right now. Uh, let's see. Megan says, oh, the Alaska episode has been my favorite. I can't wait to see more. Heck yes, Megan. I can't wait to see either. I got to watch those up. Watch them. All right. Uh, Megan also says, LOL, Science is also my threshold. It's a, it's a creepy movie. Everyone watch it if you haven't. All right. So, oh, I also wanted to ask you about cinematography. Uh, the advice that you gave for taking photos, does that also apply to, you know, those people that might be, you know, wanting to make sure they can take, uh, you know, videos of cryptids as they're out researching or is there uh, completely unique advice uh, when it comes to being a, a cinematographer? I mean, if you're looking for just cryptids, you're going to want something that will take pictures quick and probably we're not going outside Tegan. My daughter yeah. thinks it's time to go outside, um, <laughs> but it is not, it is dark. Uh, but also like night vision is very helpful. Oh yeah. So there are a lot of cameras that have like IR so you can do mm -hmm. the infrared light with them. That's very helpful. We have a handful of hand handy cams that do that. And if you're doing that, you're going to want the IR extender to go on okay. top of it because the IR on the camera only goes a short distance, like 20 to 40 feet, depending on how good of a camera you have. An IR extender can get you up to 100 to 150, depending on what you get. So that just gives you a bigger range of what you can film. Hmm. I didn't Especially know that. when you're talking great. about like Bigfoot, because a lot of times you're doing it at night. Uh, True. That's watching good. My daughter try to open the front door. <laughs> Don't do she's it. There's trying... dinosaurs out there. <laughs> she's trying so hard, <laughs> but she can't figure it out. Um, but yeah, IR is very good for filming at night. So it's just a gotcha. matter of getting something that'll do that. And usually you're looking at a handy cam for that sort of thing. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Um, I'll actually, I've got, I've got a weird question. This is kind of a swing for the fences and see if it hits. And if it doesn't, that's fine. Um, your background as, uh, you know, being a vet tech with concentration neurology, mm -hmm. you've got certain skills from that. I would assume, did you find anything like, uh, the knowledge you gained from that coming into play when you're working with STM, any weird crossover knowledge or, I've gotten Seth FaceTiming me to look at bones or claw really? marks or something he's found so many times. One was on a oh, wow. uh, Bigfoot project where he found a pelvis in a tree. Yes. And yes. he's like, what's this from? I'm like, it looks like a cow. And then whenever Alex and Eli were up filming the Beyond the Trail, that was at the, the farm where we do Bigfoot project. There's a outhouse there that was destroyed and they're like what made these claw marks and i was like it looks like a coyote um so i definitely have gotten lots of questions about what animal could this have been or what makes this um we're actually getting ready to collaborate with someone i don't think i can announce it yet but it's on a dogman type project um that i just answered a series of questions for so it's yep. definitely come up a few times in those regards. Yeah. Um, any interview I don't have to edit is amazing. So better to, to err on the side of caution when it comes to <laughs> Seth coming after me with like, Hey, <laughs> Hey, Jay, Jeremiah, you gotta edit that up. No, I'm just kidding. Seth doesn't do that. But he's a, he's a cool yeah. dude. Um, STM is coming out with a lot of, from, from what I hear, STM is coming out with a lot of really cool stuff in the future. And I am psyched for that. You know, like, mm -hmm. um, yeah, you guys are definitely branching out into a lot of cool stuff. I'm excited. Let's 
let's talk for a few minutes about like what does it what does it mean to be the company business manager like what what do you do exactly you got to do a lot i'm guessing i i do a lot of stuff that probably isn't that interesting oh yeah I'm, it is. I'm the one that like pays people and mm. uh so if you buy something from our web store, I'm the one that ships it. If you backed our Kickstarter and you're getting rewards, I'm the one that's in charge of doing all of that and uh, making sure the credits for our movie is, you know, correct when it comes to like the backers yeah. and that sort of thing. So it's a lot of paperwork mostly. Okay. I help plan our <laughs> trips logistically when it comes to, yeah, uh, we're filming here, here, and here. So we need an Airbnb in the middle. Do we need a rental car? How much is that going to cost? It's a lot of math. Yeah, it is. Um, but with my background, I guess I'm a little better suited <laughs> for math than you know. Everyone else is very artistic and very sure creative, so they're better suited with the research and storytelling and. Heather does the research and talks to people and is very charming and gets us all the information we need. So any other hole that needs plugged, I try to do that. That's awesome. Yeah. And like, thank goodness that you're there to do all that stuff. Cause it's like, I feel that a, a thing like STM when they're small, they might not need something like that, but I feel like, you probably got to a point and they're like, Oh my goodness, I need someone to do this. And that's all they do. Cause like, I can't imagine like trying to do all that while you're out filming a documentary. It's not going to work, you know? Yeah. Well, and a lot of times, I mean, I'm also a cinematographer, so. Oh, sure. Yeah, that's true. That's when true. I'm on the road, laptop goes and doing all that stuff on the road, which a lot of my job other than shipping of things is from my computer. So I can't kind of do that wherever I need to do it from. But then it's like, all right, I've been gone now for a shoot for four days. So yep. I have all the stuff to ship out. Exactly. from order. Exactly. And our, uh, our squad members, we have squad leaders on our YouTube page and they get oh, uh, that's right. yeah. quarterly care packages that I put together. I actually just shipped them out today nice. and they have goodies from Alaska and New Jersey and everywhere wow. that we've been in the last three months. That is cool. So whenever we're out, I'm the one that's like, all right, I know I need to get stuff for this and we need to make sure that we're taking care of X, Y, and Z while we're doing stuff while also, you know, maintaining a budget of sorts. <laughs> right. Yes, I totally get that. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Which is hard when you are, I mean, we're small. We're yeah. like a company of five or six people. Okay. Depending on what we're doing. Like as far as payroll, there's like five of us. And then we have other people that come on like project to project or collaborate sure. with us because, you know, a lot of the people we work with have other jobs and they're friends. So it's like, Hey, can mm -hmm. you do this project? Yes. Mm -hmm. You're hired for the project. They're not necessarily okay. yep. on payroll. So it's yep. just a matter of, we have, you know, four to five, you know, employees, but there's always more than that. They have to keep track of yeah. you need paid for this. You need paid for that. So it's, it's just a lot of keeping track of things and reminding of things. I, oh man, it's gotta be wild. And so Eli does the social media, right? Yes. Eli's okay. our social media guy. And he's yeah. also the one editing the Ridge yeah. as well as being co-host of beyond the trail. Totally. I, I couldn't remember if you did, if you do any of the social media or, but that's a yeah. guy that needs to do that all himself pretty much. Yeah. That's I was means. on occasionally, like I'm also planning and putting together a monster fest. Yeah, so anything that's been yeah. posted about that has been me, okay. but 98% of anything that's on social media is Eli. Fantastic. So let's talk about monster fest. Yeah, this is a pretty big deal. Isn't it? It's going to be pretty fantastic. I'm yeah. very excited. We haven't even announced our biggest guest yet. Are you serious? Oh, I, yeah. oh my, oh, this is, 
I'm going to get so some like I know stuff Cliff, on Bigfoot Society Cliff tonight. is like yeah. a big yeah. name. And I thought he was the announced- big name. Oh, he is not. Wow. We have, <laughs> we've announced what, six? I think we have nine or ten total. So, and wow. I know we got one, a real big fish in the boat that's going to be announced last is fitting. Oh man, that's awesome. And we had a total between between uh, sponsors, guests, and vendors. We have 70 tables. Wow. All of the vendor tables are sold. Yep. We have a couple sponsorships left, but not many. So we have this grand ballroom at the Double Tree by Holton in downtown Canton. And it's okay. going to be packed with vendors. Wow. And then we have a speaker area. We have a live podcast area. And we have another room that is going to be film screenings. So we're going to show oh, some cool. of yeah, our yeah. films. Yeah, nice. That makes sense. Why not? Mm-hmm. Totally. Can And if you need to say, I can't talk about that. I don't care. But I'm. can you tell me anything? Like, what's the deal with the podcast, the live podcast room? So I'm we wanted, we have a lot of friends who have podcasts. Sure. And we have some podcasts. So we're like, yeah, this is a thing that people are into, obviously. They listen to them. They enjoy them. So we wanted to be able to highlight some of those. Mm -hmm. So Seth curated the list of who's going to be doing the live podcast. I don't actually know who's doing all of them other than I know we're doing some. And I believe Astonishing Legends is recording because they're two of our guests. That'd be cool. Yeah. So they'll be doing a live recording there. But basically, we know our guest speakers are going to have big crowds, but we wanted something to break that up because we wanted everyone yeah. to feel like there's something that they can do it all the time. So we're going to have the live podcast recording going on at the same time. So no matter what time it is, there's going to be something interesting to do if you don't want to shop at the moment with the vendors. Totally. Oh man, that is so cool. Cause it's a one day event, right? It is. And if this goes well, obviously the plan is to grow it in the future. Wow. But since this is, I mean, we did Minerva Monster Day in the past. It's been a couple of years due to COVID since we've done anything. Sure. And that was an outdoor event. So this is our first time doing something this grand indoors in a hotel with everything that that involves. So we kind of wanted to dip our toe with a one day event to see what the response would be. So far, it's been very good. Um, so, yeah. and we do have the VIP tickets as well which will get you in an hour early to everything. And it includes being on the guest list for our film premiere that Friday night before at the camp palace, which is less than a block away from the hotel. And doesn't it get you like, um, for the podcast room, it gets you like something too, right? Yeah. So we're reserving the first two or three rows of the oh podcast room goodness. for VIP first come first serve, but those first three rows will just be for VIPs and you get a t-shirt, which will be, wow. you know, exclusive to the event. We're going to have special shirts made for those. That's great. So it's very hard for me to focus right now because I'm like, I thought that the astonishing legend, I was, I was trying to figure out, I was like, I know he's going after like big names. Okay. It's weird. He already announced the astonishing legend guys. Obviously mm-hmm. they're the big names, but you're saying, nope. There's something even bigger, and that's going to blow people away. Yeah, so I mean, to me, it's bigger. Okay, interesting. Um, yeah. So, I mean, within the cryptid world, I feel like there's some names that are just really big and people yeah. that don't do events very frequently. Oh, and I think we're very blessed that we have a couple people coming that would fall into that category. You have connection. The, the thing about Seth and SDM is you guys have cultivated connections over years that are definitely coming into play for Mm -hmm. an event like this and it's it's very very smart for sure oh man it's good good stuff i'm excited uh we were dressed so we drove from iowa out to north of boston and like so we're driving past columbus and i'm like oh man there's Mm -hmm. a sign for canton that's where monster fest is gonna happen Mm -hmm. there's a sign for salt fork that's where all the crazy bigfoot stuff happens but. And to anyone who buys tickets or anything, we do have a ho- uh, block at the hotel. Okay. So whenever you reserve your tickets, you get a link to get in the block, which nice. is significantly discounted rates. And you can do one night or two nights with that rate at the lower level. So if awesome. you wanted to go Friday night and Saturday night, you can get it at the cheaper rate. An important thing to us was that we wanted everyone to come and for it to be affordable. 
especially for our, our vendors because oh, yeah. they're paying to come. They're coming to That's make true. money. So we, I negotiated pretty heavily with the hotel to get the room rate knocked down. I think it was a little over $50 a night just that's, because I was like, good. this is, this is unacceptable to our vendors. We need to make sure that right. they're taken care of because ultimately they make or break an event. Cause if you don't have good vendors, that's pretty important. Um, mm-hmm. So I feel like we got that figured out pretty well, but that's also available to anyone that buys tickets. That's uh, oh man. I love that. It, it's, it's very awesome to me how over the last year and a half, uh, the community is stepping it up um, and making amazing events. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to shout out definitely the Moth Boys. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cryptid Bash last year oh was my great. I can't goodness. wait to go this year. It's, it's, you know, that, that I think, you know, them making that kind of opened up the floodgates for like, like, Hey, let's, um, Hmm. How do I say things and not get people mad? Let's make a, let's take pride in what we're doing and like make amazing events for the cryptic community. Let's Mm -hmm. do it guys. And like Seth, I know Seth has been planning this for a long time and like, he's going to blow the doors off the community with monster fest. And I'm excited for you guys to do this. Like it's amazing. So hats off to you. Thank you. Um, Yeah, definitely. I always need to ask, we're, we're coming into the last minutes, but I got to ask you because I always ask my guest. Uh, I'm curious, what, according to you, is Bigfoot? Oh, that's a really good question because I've been on all these interviews and it's all the, is this a flesh and blood, blood creature? Is this something paranormal? Does it come through portals? Is that mm-hmm. how it disappears and gets away so mm-hmm. well? And I've heard compelling stories and arguments sure. from both sides through the interviews as someone who studied anatomy and biology and I did an ape lab and oh. all these things I feel like it's very possible that it could be a flesh and blood creature that is just really really good at hiding I mean when you figure pack animals grow up and they are taught by their elders so if they're taught people are bad humans are bad we stay away from them that's something that's going to be passed down and they're going to get better at and something when we were in alaska is there they're told or the stories that the bigfoots are very aggressive Uh, so it's like all right they have less exposure to people up there so they're not necessarily told these are harmless things to stay away from these are armed people living off the lab are off the land who are aggressive and something to be feared. So you need to be aggressive back. So if that's a lesson that is taught through lineage, then that could explain the difference in behavior. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that necessarily, I mean, means anything, but when you look at it from like an animal behavior point of view, if these are lessons that are passed down, then that kind of makes sense to a point. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, Megan says, "Gotta get got those VIP." Megan from the Patreon, she is ready to go. Um, awesome. She, I know there's a few people that are excited. That was Justin. Oh my goodness, a Chirna, Chirna Pesky. I oh, struggle yeah. with his life. The guy from Canada. Mm-hmm. That's cool. He's. I don't think he comes to a lot of lots of stuff. So that's a pretty big deal. Um. Mm, good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, got to read a comment real quick. Okay. So, oh, um, do you have any favorite cryptid books? I, I like to ask people that. Oh, books? I mean, I don't read a lot of cryptid books. That's Heather's job. <laughs> yeah. Just I'm a shot in the dark. A, no problem. I'm kind of a comic book nerd, really. Oh, what do you like? Um, Right now, I'm actually reading fables and oh. umbrella academy and okay. an apocalyptic scooby-doo book nice um and i just finished the first six issues of the nice house on the lake and if you haven't read that and you like graphic novels and you mm. like an apocalyptic theme it is so good 
I it really like the uh, so good. the Uncle Scrooge comics when I was a little kid. Really like those. Yeah, uh, Carl Barks. At, yeah. At the office, a special edition of that just showed up. I know. Um, that has like a, oh, you probably saw the story Seth I posted. Saw it. it is I was so jealous. So heavy, and I'm like, we yeah. are moving, and there are so many books <laughs> in this office. <laughs> we have to carry this now. <laughs> Because it like goes into detail about like the history of Scrooge McDuck and there's all these articles and it's like super nerding out stuff, which is amazing. Well, um, and it's it's like yeah. a really thick hardcover too. And oh, it's really? All of it. It has a gold coin in the cover of it. Oh, cool. Uh, that makes sense with Scrooge mm-hmm. McDuck. Yeah. Uh, listeners are like, what in the world am I listening to right now? Um, <laughs> Jonathan Dodd had a quick, I asked oh, a hey, question. John. Yeah, yeah. He's a cool dude. Um, his question that he had, this will be interesting if you, if it hits, um, do you have a favorite Bigfoot encounter story? Oh, so, so when we were just filming in Alaska, okay, this will probably be in the second Alaska movie we make, not last frontier. Cause the second nice. one is a little bit more centered on. A different aspect of it but there was this one uh young man he was a native he came in and he talked about being at his uncle's or relative's fishing cabin and how a bigfoot basically attacked them and blocked them into the cabin Whoa. and these natives who are prone to hunting and living off the land and fishing like rough men were so scared that they couldn't speak for like six hours Wow! as they looked out the window and watched this thing. And then finally were able to get out. And with the conviction, he told that story. I don't know how mm. you could question yep. what he thought he saw. Cause this is a man in his late twenties, early thirties. Like he knows what he's talking about. He's not confused. He's telling the story with, all of the conviction and emotion that you would expect from a traumatizing story. And that was Man, that's crazy. really interesting. That's the most violent Bigfoot story I'd ever heard. Wow. But all the kids, so many details too. And I, that, that will be in, I believe the Alaska movie that'll be out next year. Gotcha. Ah, looking forward to it. Courtney, it has been super fun chatting with you. Thanks so much for coming on. Um, definitely going to have links to small town monsters and, and all that good stuff in the show notes. Is there anything else, uh, that people should know about, you know, following, uh, if they want to keep up to date with what you're doing with small town monsters. So Eli does a good job with our social media. So okay. our Facebook, our Instagram are really good. Yeah. Um, American werewolves just came out. It's totally finally on Amazon prime. Our yeah. distributor had an issue. So I have an angry child. You're good. It, it took a little over a week to get on there, but it's out now and it's really good. I helped film that movie. The stories are really good. I recommend watching it just because it's an interesting take on not the subject matter necessarily, but the stories behind it. And it focuses on the witnesses, which I don't think is done enough. Um, because everyone wants the proof, they want the evidence, but yeah. behind all that are these people who have had these experiences. Exactly. So focusing on them, I thought was a really cool thing to do. And I really enjoyed filming it. So I'd recommend that, uh, and the Ridge. So I, I think those are the major things right now. Jersey devil comes out the end of September slash early October. Awesome. That was super fun. We just got back from New Jersey two weeks ago, filming the doc portion of that. Their narrative portion was filmed like a month and a half ago, and it is going to be really cool. Uh, Yeah, I'm excited for it. Yeah. There's going to be three basically mini movies within this documentary, and they all have completely different styles man so oh, I'm excited. it's yeah. not only going through history but it's kind of going through film history oh cool good stuff good stuff oh man thank thank you again so much for coming on courtney um love what you guys are doing 
Uh, keep up the good work. And uh, thank you so much for coming on. All right. Thank you. Real quick announcement before we head out. Uh, I've got the opportunity of going on my first Bigfoot expedition at the end of July. Currently, I'm uh, trying to raise money to buy gear for that. If you want to specifically support Bigfoot Society and, uh, you know, as I go into my first Bigfoot expedition, uh, feel free to do that by going over to the Bigfoot Society Etsy page and buying a t-shirt over there. That will help fund my gear for that expedition. Uh, you can also join the uh, Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Bigfoot Society forward slash the Bigfoot Society. I'm about to talk to that talk about that again in a few minutes. But uh, that's where you'll be able to see, I'll be putting some interviews uh, from that expedition. Plan is to put some extra content directly from that uh, expedition into the Patreon. So definitely uh, support the podcast through there as well. Thanks. Thanks for listening to the Bigfoot Society podcast. Please take a few minutes to review the show on iTunes five stars as it does help us get into the eyes and ears of more listeners on iTunes. Uh, That will help us just get bigger and bigger and get even better quality guests for future shows. Uh, Also, if you have any Bigfoot encounters or cryptid encounters, please send your stories and Uh, audio and photos whatever you've got over to bigfootsociety at gmail.com if you'd like to become more involved with bigfoot society and get some extra content we do have a patreon uh, where you can get all sorts of cool things for example for seven dollars a month you get extra bigfoot society content uh, usually interviews but other things as well you get a sweet membership card and a vinyl sticker that i send to you in the mail you get access to the Bigfoot Society After Show, which is an extra interview after the main interview with the weekly guest. And usually they are up for uh, Patreon members to be in that extra show segment with them and me. And you get to ask your uh, question live to them and get an answer from the guest, which as you've seen what guests we've had in the past, this could be a really big deal. There's also a private Discord where you can get involved with uh, talking to me one-on-one and the community there, and that's always a great time. You can find the Patreon at www.patreon.com forward slash the Bigfoot Society. Uh, we're very thankful for all our supporters that we have in so many different ways and appreciate uh, all our listeners coming back week after week to listen to more cryptozoology-based interviews. Uh, Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. The views and opinions expressed are those of the guest and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Bigfoot Society. Any content provided by our guests are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, individual, or anyone. Thank you.